Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be processing uh, my California Nebula image um, using PixInsight. So uh, before I actually get to the point of actually uh, processing it, I need to uh, stack the data that I captured over four nights it was. And I'm going to show you um, the process with which I do that within PixInsight. Um, so if you're interested in that, if you want to know more, then uh, keep watching. So uh, we've got uh, PixInsight open here, but there's a, fair, a number of things that we want to do first before we start processing the images. Um, so these are my previous night's images. Uh, so night one, two, three, and I've got to get to uh, four. So I've got nothing in my approved folder, whereas um, yeah, the previous uh, night's images I've um, I've approved them using subframe selector and um, yeah, they're all ready to stack, so I need to get these ones ready. Um, also, what we need to do is, um, because we're stacking multi-night images with different flats from each night as well, uh, we need to rename these files such that the tags that I create will be picked up. So if we go into flat, uh, what I'm going to do here first is select everything, right-click and rename. And you can see here, um, you can multi or you can rename um, files all in one go. So I'm going to rename the beginning of the file from flat underscore to night four flat underscore. So that's that done. And then we're going to move to the lights and select all of those, rename, and we'll go from light underscore to night four underscore light underscore. So there we go, we're all ready to go from that point of view. Next thing we need to do is actually make sure that we've got the best um, images that we can possibly get from that night's imaging. Uh, and what we need to do uh, for this is to go to um, image inspection, down into subframe selector. And what we're going to need to do now is, is open up these images uh, to inspect them. So if we go to Nebula, California Nebula, Night Lights and select them all, open those up. Um, so uh, I got this uh, this way of working from uh, Windy City Astro uh, Photography. Um, so you can put in all of your specific details to get the exact frames um, and uh, exact calibration information. Um, however, you can just do it relative um, and that seems to be working quite nicely for me as well. So I'm just going to leave all of that as default, hit the global apply button and wait for the images to load. This does take quite some time so I'm going to uh, just fast forward here. So that's uh, finished loading now. So what we can see here is um, a breakdown of uh, various things about the images in terms of uh, signal to noise ratio, uh, full width, half, medium, star amplitude um, medium values for the for the image in the background and everything so basically lots of um, lots of ways of measuring the quality of an image um, so what I'm going to be doing is going through uh, picking up uh, FWHM eccentricity stars and median uh, to select my images so we start up with um, full width half medium And it's already sort of given me um, an indication in terms of uh, the, the quality of the image that's available, i.e. the sort of medium, and then there's some standard deviations um, above and below that. Um, um, so what we want to do is select or deselect anything that um, falls outside of this grey bar um, to get the best images that I took from that particular night. So uh, you could select these manually by clicking on them, or actually you could just um, click on uh, this expression editor here, and you can then start to uh, type in um, the values that you want to sort of exclude. So uh, this is usually a tricky thing. You have to look at the um, 
Look at the values there, so 2.219, 2.75, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, 2.
Um, so we're finished with this now, we can close this down. So uh, if we go back to here, we've got our approved images, and you can see they've still got the night four underscore light. So that's everything we've got there. So we're ready to actually stack the images now. To do that, we're going to use a script under script batch processing called weighted batch pre-processing. The purpose of this script is basically to do your stacking. So you can um, use various different bits of software to uh, stack. You can use uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Um, used to be my go-to piece of software, but uh, these days uh, I've started using PixInsight. It's significantly slower, but it does produce better results. So um, yeah, that's why I use that. Um, so you've got uh, your, if you're familiar with calibration already, uh, you've got bias, darks, flats, lights. Um, so this is where you need to um, load your your calibration frames. So I've already done bias before, so I've actually got a, a master bias um, image, which is basically all of my, my bias images all stacked together to create master bias. Same with the darks. Um, and then the flats. So um, because I've stacked this um, three nights in a row, um, and now I've got the fourth night, I've already got the um, night one, two, and three already created, and I've already got master flats for those nights. So what we need to do is um, add the flats for uh, the fourth night. So we're going to go into night four flats and select all of these flats. Um, so you may or may not have noticed that there's um, these sort of, it knows that it's night four. So how does it know it's night four? Um, and the way it knows is by um, the grouping keywords over here on the right hand side. So I've already created some keywords um, and I've done some imaging that's gone on to eight nights. Um, and so basically the keyword will group the files based on um, a file match. Apparently you can do this with um, the path as well rather than just a file, but I've not been able to make that work. So um, so that's that's what I've got so far. So that's the, uh, the flats are there loaded. Um, and we now need to load all of the light frames. So if we go into lights, um, load night one, which I didn't get many uh, successful images that night. Uh, go into night two. This bit's a bit of a laborious process. I think that there could be a better way of me arranging these um, such that I could probably just do like the add directory and then select the directory and then it should just add all of the files. Um, but this way at least you know you're definitely selecting the files that you want and you're not trying to stack some some data from uh, other locations. Uh, so we've got uh, a lot of data from uh, nights two and three and then finishing off with night four. So we're going into the approved folder. So you might have noticed there I'd previously copied the approved ones into the light folder but um, yeah it's all you can see all of the underscore A's where I've used subframe selector to select those images as well. Um, so there's lots of uh, settings within um, the the light section, um, things around sort of normalizing of the of the data um, to to make sure that they're sort of similar light levels and contrast and things like that. Um, and to be fair, I, I, I leave all of these um, as their default. Um, I'm not an expert in this whole area of calibration yet um, because I've only just started using it. But I thought it was worth knowing about the uh, grouping keywords because nobody seems to cover um, how to stack your multi-night um, images. So that's how you do it. Grouping keywords and rename the files. Um, up here in presets, um, you can select whether you want to go for maximum quality, faster or fastest with low quality. Uh, I'm going to go for maximum quality. Probably uh, will have to stop the video because it's likely going to take forever to complete. So you've got the calibration section here. We just need to run through and make, thing, make sure things are, are selected. This should be automatically sort of picking these things up, but it doesn't seem like it always does. Um, which I'm not sure why. Um, 
So just do optimize dark frame uh, to make sure it's picking up the correct calibrations there and just select that there so it's definitely linked and you'll see here each of these nights you've got the master flap uh, for night 3, night 2, night 1 and night 4 um, and it, it feels like you should be, and I always tick uh, optimize master dark I'm not sure whether you need to or not so if somebody could um, put a comment in the uh, in the video to explain whether you definitely do or not but uh, it gives me a warm fuzzy feeling when I see ticks against these things um, and then same with the, uh, the flats it's got um, auto calibration which it would be nice in here if it gave you a tick when it found a, an appropriate match and it should be matching based on these uh, categories here however what I just do um, belt and braces is to make sure that um, I'm selecting the right one so I'll look here and go night 4 is the bottom one I know that that's uh, 1.38 uh, second exposure, so I just manually select it here to make sure it's definitely uh, got that, and you can see the linked icon there. This is night three, uh, top one's night three, which is 10 seconds. A bit of a peculiar um, light calibration, I must have done it when it was pretty dark still. And this one is night two, that's night two there, so 0 0.09 seconds. Select that one. And then the final one is night one. That's night one, 0 0.56 seconds. So everything's um, selected and aligned and all of those sorts of things, which is good. Um, all of these are selected in their default settings, so I'm happy with those. I think the, the only bit around post calibration, you've got some options here in terms of when you're debayering the image. Um, you can get it to create a separate RGB or combined and separate or just combined. Um, it's a one shot colour camera so I'm just leaving it as combined anyway. Um, but you can split it back out and pix inside anyway so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I don't need to do any drizzling because the um, the sampling of the camera and the telescope are matched so drizzling is not necessary in this instance. And then the final thing down here is the output directory so just making sure that um, you've got the right output directory selected so I've got here already California Nebula I've created a folder called stacking um, and because I've been stacking um, previous nights data it's already created these folders and we'll go through those um, in a minute or probably an hour or so for me um, what what's in here and what we care about and what we don't care about so click open to select that and then just hit run so you'll get uh, presented with um, some information here um, saying how much disk space it's going to use to create all of these calibration frames um, it's insane just for one image you're going to use 78 gig worth of data so we're just going to hit continue um, and let that uh, wear away um, this is going to take quite some time to do so I'm just going to um, pause video recording here and then come back when it's finished calibrating all of the frames and then we can get into the actual final post processing. So uh, something a bit strange happened after uh, stacking completed. Uh, it did actually complete which is good but um, it took a while so I left it and when I came back my, uh, my Mac was turned off. So uh, anyway um, so the result of stacking uh, gets you this um, a number of folders within the stacking folder. So if we just go into that quickly, um, there's a, a folder containing calibrated frames, um, all of the debayered um, lights, uh, log files to see what happened, um, and then you've got your, all of your uh, sort of registered images there. All of this you can throw away. The only one that you really want to keep is the uh, is the master. Um, in here you've got the master flats for e from each of the nights um, so it's stacked all of those flats together and created you a, a single master flat and then you've got this one um, image here which has got a very long winded name master light, bin 1, the resolution, uh, 300 second exposures, no filters and it's an RGB image uh, this is the one that we want to work with um, so what I'm going to do is just copy this to uh, my folder for editing Minimize all of this. 
Um, and what we're going to do is call it uh, MGC1499. Um, and it's actually 11 hours, 55 minutes um, integration time in the end, which is pretty good. So drag that onto there, and we're going to start working with this image. So uh, when you first open it, you won't really see anything because it's a, a linear image. Um, so we just need to auto stretch it, and then you can begin to see um, some of the information. Uh, so what we need to do um, first, I've actually got these um, roughly in order of, of my workflow, although to be fair, this is um, partly for mono images and there's some channel combination and things like that. So uh, I won't be using all of these uh, for this particular image processing. First thing I want to do is actually um, crop this because there will be some uh, artifacts through dithering where each time I take a, an image or every five images, it then moves the image slightly, um, which means that you won't get um, the benefit of all of those stacked images. Uh, so we just need to take a bit of that image away. Uh, that should be enough. Uh, we've also got this really sort of nasty green um, cast, but what we're going to do is um, use dynamic background extraction to, to begin to sort of process this. I'm going to follow a, a technique which uh, I like because it gives me good results. Um, it's from uh, Visible Dark Astro, um, uh, Canadian a Canadian guy does some really good videos, so uh, check him out. Um, and essentially, um, yeah, you up the tolerance, up the shadow relaxation, um, create a big sample radius, um, and then you end up with a bunch of sample boxes, all pretty big. Uh, normally, you want to avoid stars if you've got small sample boxes, but because the boxes are so big, it's actually got quite a good um, uh, background to star ratio. Uh, so it actually works pretty well. I'm just going to go through um, deleting the boxes in the middle that I don't uh, want because it's just to do the calibration around the edge of the frame. Um, and because this is the California Nebula and because I know that there are some uh, nebula areas around the edge of the frame as well, I'm going to remove those edge boxes too. Um, and then also down here in the, the bottom left corner, I know that there's there's some error, and you can just about see it, but because of the high green area, it's difficult to see. So I think that should be okay. Um, so that's the, the samples all uh, picked out, and then I'm just going to make sure that um, using a particular correction type, this is actually going to be the second one, uh, you've got to discard background model because we're not going to use it for anything. We're just going to replace that target image because why not? I'm going to drag this process down because I'm going to reuse this later and it allows me to reuse all of these sample points again. I'm just going to change this to division and hit tick. And what division does is help um, help calibrate out any uh, vignetting of the image. It um, hasn't been caught from the, the flat uh, calibration. And actually I've see here I could probably have done with removing that one maybe that one as well and these two let me go back actually going to close this down quickly go back stretch it so you get the green mess and that's the beauty of this means that I can actually just reload this again so let's get rid of this one as well and this one and let's try again that, stretch it, and this is the uh, completed uh, background extraction using DBE uh, for the vignetting. So what we're going to do now is reopen up this process and we can reuse all of these sample points. Um, I've just remembered that I've just deleted that one and that one but didn't save it. Um, so we can reuse all of these for subtraction as well. Just click the tick and that will complete the background extraction. Close that down. Um, so the next stage in the process is um, background neutralization. Uh, so you could open this up, you could drag this uh, process icon onto there to complete background extraction, or you can just drag the whole process onto there. That does the same thing. Uh, so that's all complete. 
and now on to um, color calibration. So for this I'm going to use um, just the standard color calibration which uh, requires me to use uh, previews on the image and we need a white reference point and a background reference point. So let's uh, find a good dark part of the image for background and press Alt N or Options key in N if you're on Mac to select the background. That's preview one. Then we want to find a a good star. Let's go for this one here. It's not not too blown out. It's not got any funny halos around it. Um, let's go for that star there. So to move around as well, you can hold the space button down and then drag the image as well to save using the scroll bars. Let's create another preview. Drag that around that star and select that for the white reference point. It's preview two. And let's just zoom out with um, command zero or control zero on PC. Drag that color calibration and let it do its thing. So that's all good. It's looking okay from, from the screen perspective. Now I need to just do the uh, stretching. So um, I use Easy Processing Suite for stretching. Um, I'll, in terms of being able to install it, so updates, manage repositories if you don't have it already. You need to add uh, this URL here um, by clicking Add. And then click OK a few times restart the application and then you should have um, the easy processing suite in here to use. So we're going to do easy soft stretch. Um, keep with all of the defaults, not got any issues with those and then just run easy soft stretch. And so that's our image stretch and now what we want to do is remove the stars uh, so that we can uh, just focus on the nebula. So to do that, uh, open up uh, Star Exterminator. This is a paid-for um, add-on to PixInsight. Uh, you can use Starnet++ as well, um, but this one works better for my setup being a Mac. So it takes a little bit of a while to uh, to run through, but um, it's still relatively quick. I think I was watching a video about. Um, or from Quiv the Lazy Geek, and he, he highlighted these um, strange halos around some of the stars when you're using uh, the Optolong um, L-Extreme dual band filter, which is what was used to take this image. I'd never actually noticed it before, but yeah, for some stars, it doesn't necessarily need to be the brightest star, but sometimes you just get this crazy halo, um, and there's not really much you can do about it, so yeah, it is what it is. And you can see that it's there on the extracted image as well. Um, so that's uh, star extraction complete. You also notice that it does look a bit noisy. Um, you can see a good, good bit of grain um, when you're zoomed into the image. And we just need to run denoise now. Uh, this is another easy processing suite script um, where you can just literally accept all of the defaults and just hit run denoise. Um, and this does take quite some time to uh, run, so I'm just going to leave this to run in the background and um, I'll pick it up when it's finished. Okay, so now uh, noise reduction is uh, complete, it's a very sensible time to actually save this image. Uh, to be honest, we should have saved it earlier. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, starless denoise for the type. Uh, there we go save it's 32 bit and also save the stars as well because uh, we don't want to lose those as well so it's already put underscore stars in there for us so that's good save that's 32 bit as well right um, so we're now at the part of the image processing where um, actually I'm going to be using a, a new script created by Bill Blanchon uh, I'll put a link to his uh, YouTube channel uh, in the description so uh, there's a pixel math script here, which I'm definitely not going to pretend that I understand exactly what's going on in this script. 
but uh, yeah, he's using pixel math to create what is essentially a an SHO style image out of dual narrowband data. So uh, one thing to just notice is if you split the channels, um, so this is a dual narrowband image. Um, there's lots of HA in the in the the red channel because um, it's an HA03 filter. Um, and there's also some data in the in the green and some in the blue. Um, but at the end of the day as well, the um, the reason why even though this is a dual narrowband filter, there's actually the O3 data sits in between the blue and the green uh, filters on the actual camera itself. So you 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 gather um, that same data on both of those filters. So, which is why you still end up with an RGB image. So what this filter does, I believe, is is kind of mess around with these uh, three channels um, and creates you a SHO style image. So um, I'll also link to where you can get these from, and that's from uh, Bill's uh, Google Drive. Um, and to just use them, you can just essentially um, drag the triangle onto the image. There are also some settings in symbols that you can play about with some of these values. See if you get sort of slightly different uh, effects and things. I think last uh, last time I was playing about with these I did actually um, increase uh, the HA blend slightly uh, and left everything else the same. Uh, so I'm just going to do that again this time. So drag that onto uh, onto the image wait for it to process through and run run that script and, and there we have it. Um, so just literally one script take, takes it from um, what looks like a typical HOO image to an SHO image. Um, let's just get rid of these previews because they're annoying me because we don't need these anymore. I'm just going to save this image as well so I can come back to it later. Um, so one thing I forgot to mention about this is um, if you once you've run this um, normalization what it's actually doing is taking the green and blue channels and essentially normalizing them and what that means is bringing them up to the same level of brightness as the the red channel, the hydrogen channel. Uh, so you can see here, um, the green looks fairly similar to the the red in terms of intensity, and the blue's also been brought up to that same level of intensity. Um, what it's also done is is brought a lot of noise with it as well, which is, is a shame. But um, when you saw the brightness and the detail uh, before, it's actually stretched. Um, you could see it was quite dark, so therefore I had to stretch it quite a lot to get that detail up. So uh, we've got this image. Um, I'm actually just going to rotate it quickly because um, to me it doesn't feel like it's the right way around. Uh, so I'm just going to use fast rotation uh, to switch it around 180 degrees. I'm going to do the same with the stars as well. And then just make sure that we save these two images. And yep, so we're now at the point where we want to do some curves adjustments. So uh, opening up curves um, and then selecting preview on this image so we can see what we're doing. Um, I'm just going to try and boost and bring a bit more detail and contrast into the image uh, by just creating a bit of an S-curve then run that and maybe once more to get this image here, I think that's about right so the next part we can do is um, using some other um, masks as well so um, what we can do is pick up the yellow mask to get some of this um, data here and just select this area to change the colours and then also the blue mask for this area up here as well. So um, if we open these, these masks up just so you can see what's in there. 
Um, I think these these are taken from uh, the same guy as well. He seems to uh, uh, come up with a lot of pixel math, which is fantastic, so thank you very much. I tend to use these just uh, straight out of the box. Um, I don't do anything with them, just uh, drag and drop onto the uh, image to create that mask. Uh, typically it doesn't take too long to uh, to create that mask. Um, you can see it looks a bit a bit grainy and a bit fuzzy. Um, and we can also use this mask blur um, pixel math here as well and just drag that onto there a couple of times just to create a nice nice fuzzy mask. So we've got the yellow mask there and then we'll just do the same with the blue mask just drag that onto there. And then add the mask blur a couple of times. Um, I might actually use curves as well on this mask to boost it a little bit more. Something like that maybe. So I'm just trying to get this area um, a bit brighter but then there's also some other areas around the image which I don't really want. Um, but also this bright area here where that uh, star halo is. I don't want that to uh, to get boosted too much because it will just um, exaggerate it even further. So that's that mask. And let's maybe have a go with this as well. Let's go with that. Close all those down. Um, so to apply the masks, um, we just drag them onto the image itself. Actually, I'm going to do the blue one first. Drag the blue mask down to here, and then you can see that everything that's red is protected, and the bits that aren't red, um, you can make some changes to. And leave that there or you can go up to mask and select or unselect show mask so it's still applied it's just not visible um, but usually when you apply any or sorry when you open curves and do a preview it's um, it already removes that that mask preview anyway so what we can do is um, boost up all the levels just to make that blue area brighter um, and let's just increase the saturation a little bit in that area uh, just so it stands out a bit more. Apply that and might just apply one more time. Right, let's keep with that and then we're going to apply the yellow mask now you can always see that the mask is applied because you've got this sort of browny red border on the on the name itself so um, similar thing again so opening up the preview um, and let's just boost that a little bit and then we're going to be focusing on the saturation also change. Let's have a go with this. Um, so if you increase just the red, it's not going to because you've masked it. It's not going to change the the color temperature of the rest of the image. It's just only going to touch the bit that's masked um, out. Um, so we can change the red and green just to manipulate the colors a bit more. Uh, so you get a nice red tint down here, you've got some yellow here and you've got some blue here. 
kind of a bit of a, a rainbow type affair going on. Uh, so let's apply that and just see what happens each time you apply another one. So that, that's quite nice, I quite like that. Um, need to be careful not to overcook things too much. Okay, let's just hit apply there, quite like that. So I think that's it with curves adjustments for this. Uh, we'll use uh, local histogram equalization though, and open up the preview, and whenever you open this up in preview, it always looks terrible. So let's kind of reduce this down a bit, increase the kernel radius a bit, see that's what we're kind of getting is a little bit of localized contrast which is quite nice maybe a bit too much preview on and off and see what's going on with this. Okay, I think I'll go with that. Hit the square to apply to this particular image. And then close that. I think the other thing that will look quite nice with this will be um, uh, running the script under utilities. This should be available by default as well, uh, which is um, dark, dark Structure Enhance. Um, run this with the default parameters. And what it will basically do is find these dark areas that are just dark areas within lighter areas and it will boost the contrast in those areas as well. Okay, so you can see the um, this is after, this is before. So you look at this area here, after, uh, before, and after. Right, I'm just going to move these out of the way. Probably could close them, but let's just do that for now. Um, so this is our image. Um, we've now got to add the stars in. I might just do. The final overall curves on this. Let's open this up. The interesting thing is with uh, processing images, whenever you um, Whenever you process it, you always do something subtly different, and <laughs> you can never really recreate what you created before, um, just through the infinite permutations and possibilities in terms of editing. Uh, you can end up with a completely different image each time. Um, so there we go, we go with this one, and now we just need to make some changes to the stars. Uh, so opening up um, morphological transformation just to uh, Reduce the intensity in, um, of the stars themselves. Uh, go around about about 80%. Let's go 70. Let's see what this does. Drag that onto there. Uh, just to reduce the overall intensity of those stars. And I'm just going to use Curves Transformation. Um, just to boost the saturation of the stars a bit. Kind of find that lifting it to about there and applying it a few times um, seems to bring out subtly the colours and the stars quite nicely. So it's three times on that and then just finally using pixel math to merge these two together. So opening up the expression editor um, and then we can just select the, the images that we want. So this is the main image, just double click on that, hit plus and then double click on that as well just to apply 
uh, these changes here as well. So just drag new instance onto the image and here we have the final image. So um, yeah there is still, I think because of the um, because of that blue channel there's still a bit of noise in the image as well which is a bit of a shame. I think if, uh, if I was taking this image with separate filters then I'd probably spend a bit more integration time on the blue channel just to uh, just to improve that and reduce the amount of noise that you get. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame with this uh, star halo here as well. But uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, I hope you found this useful and I'll just leave you with uh, the image to uh, look at the final thing. So thank you very much and clear skies.